Alright, this is a bad TV tuner card. And this is by um, Hapaj, 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 I can't, I never could have understood how to pronounce that name. You see it, Hapaj. Um, this is a TV tuner you put in your computer so you can hook your cable up to it and you can watch TV or record TV. I use Windows Media Center, works excellent. Um, the reason I like this one, this one's the HVR2250. Um, it has a dual tuner in it, so you can actually, um, you can record a channel and be watching a channel, or you can record two channels at the same time. Um, excellent card. I don't have anything bad to say about this card, except that I'm having to replace it after two years. But we have used it two or three times at least a week, easily two or three times a week. Um, so, this went bad. It wasn't even being detected in my computer. Took it out of my computer, put it in Tammy's computer. Still didn't get detected. So, it's, it's clearly a bad card. So, I ordered a replacement for it. Um, right now, they're running about $100 on Tiger Direct. That's where I got it from. It's right out of $100 for it. I did not get the Media Center Edition, which the Media Center Edition comes with the remote control and, and all kinds of other stuff I don't need. All I needed was the card to replace what I already had. So... I already have the remote from where I bought it last time, and, and I never use it actually. So um, we use it primarily to record TV stations, not to uh, like watch TV while we're sitting in bed or anything. So you could do it that way, but we've just never done it. Um, it was 104.11 with shipping, so 104.11 for shipping is not too bad at all. And again, it's the HVR 2250 and. Maybe when we post it on YouTube, I'll put a link or something, or at least a description in there saying uh, what the item is. So you can see I just got the, the very basic. There's that weird name. That's the product name for it. And there's a couple of TV tuners out there. Um, I really always liked this brand. I've never had bad luck with this brand. I've had a couple of them. Um, the first one I bought was just a single channel tuner and uh, it worked really well and this one's like I said worked excellent for for many years so and you can see there's a couple bags of stuff in here um, this is the actual card I'm not going to open it because it's stack sensitive but this is the actual card that replaces that one and then you get a couple other things, like you get some, um, this adapter card that hooks up to like, I can open this and say, I left my other one in the computer, so I didn't take it out to show it to you, but this is a card that plugs into that one, and you can see it's got the S-Video um, output on it, and it's got the audio, just the video output on it, and um, an audio output, and then the blaster is a TV blaster, which allows you to do your remote control into like a cable box or something like that, so... These are all, I'm thinking they're inputs, but I could be wrong. They could be outputs, too. I'm not sure. These actually are probably outputs. And then you get, um, if you do have a small, like, half-size computer box where you only use half-height cards, um, you can replace these full-size brackets with these half-size brackets. And so that would be, like, you take that one off and you put that one on, and you can see it's half the size. It's not as tall, um, if you happen to have that on your computer. And then it comes with the cable. Um, to do the S video and the software and uh, just a quick installation guide. So that's everything. Like I said, if you were to order the other edition, the Media Center edition, you would get a remote control, this little cable that has an infrared remote sensor you stick to the front of your computer so you can change the channels and stuff like that. So I'm going to install this and then hopefully we'll be back in business. Okay, I've got the computer on the side. And I'm going to just take my case off. These HP cases are nice. You just grab it and pull. And the whole thing raises off. Ignore the dust. Haven't cleaned it for a little while. Actually, it's not too bad. It's a little dusty, but not too awfully bad. Um, I'm going to be installing the card right here where this gap is. And I am I'm probably just going to... This is the exact same thing as what my other one was. And I know it's not bad, so I'm, I may just, I'm just going to keep this on the side, this other set of inputs on this little card. Um, there's really no reason to, to take out the old one, so I'm just, I'm not even worried about that. So, I should have a wrist strap on, but one of the things I always do is, while it's still in the bag, touch the metal case so your hand, you get grounded. 
And then I know it's not 100% reliable, but uh, while you're holding it out, if you kind of keep a hand on the metal case, um, it kind of keeps you as the same potential as the case at least, so you won't build up static electricity too awfully bad. Um, and this goes to the front of my computer because I have additional um, audio video outputs up there. And this is that riser card that actually came with the card. And they only go in one way. They got these little, uh, these little slot, these little notches right here where they fit in the slots on there. So they only go in one way. And originally this card was up here, but it really blocked my video card pulling in air. So I moved it down to these uh, longer slots, which work just as fine. What's good is they just slide right in. This case is a pain to get the bottoms in. Forgot I left the screw in there so I wouldn't lose it. I didn't lose it so well, I forgot to take it out. Okay, that's in there, and what I'll do now is I'll hook my cable back up to the one that's kind of up to the top, towards the top of the case. That's the one it goes into. The other one is actually for a radio. You could hook up a, um, a radio antenna to it, an FM ra a radio antenna to it, and you can actually listen to FM radio on this as well. We've just never used it, but you could use it if you wanted to. So I'm going to hook this up, and I'll be ready to turn my computer on. Okay, we're going to turn the computer on. Hopefully it detects the new hardware. You can see I have Windows 8 on here. Don't email me. Now I've got a weird thing with my Windows 8. If I leave it on here, I know everybody, you're supposed to start up in the start screen, but some program on my computer makes it pop over to the desktop as it's loading up. So if you watch it, I'm not touching anything. It'll go to the desktop here in just a minute um, as it's loading up programs. I don't know why. It's a good thing because I don't leave it on this screen anyway. All right, now that's booted up, I've got the actual drivers installed on my C drive. So I'm going to go to my C drive. And let's see if it detects it. All right, this is much better because before it just kept scanning the devices and I never found anything. This one actually found it and actually re installed drivers and it says success uh, down here at the bottom. So that's much better than it was doing before. It says drivers has been successfully updated. So we're going to exit that. And hopefully when I go to Media Center now, if not, if it doesn't recognize it here, I'll have to install the, the other drivers for it. So. Normally you would just put the CD in if you're installing it new. You would just put the CD in and uh, let it boot up off the CD and let it install the drivers and software for you. Since I already had Media Center set up from before, I didn't have to do all that. I'm just basically resetting up my card. Um, so these are the steps you go through. And this is for your guide. And it'll, it'll give you the, um, it'll ask you what, cable stuff as soon as you agree to all this stuff. It'll ask you what your cable provider is here in just one second. And I have, you notice I've got two tuners, I've got two analog and two digital. 
the really nice thing about this cable, the TV tuner is, not only can you do just regular analog cable channels, what is it, zero or two through like 68 or something like that, it also does all the digital channels, which is in the, the 100s. Now, it's not, it's not going to give you like your cable box channels, like ours here are like 756, things like that. It's not going to do that unless you go through an actual TV uh, decoder box. These are just the digital channels, the clear QAM channels that your cable company may put out. Ours are like 110.2, 110.3, 110.4, uh, those kind of things. That's what that's what they'll set up. And you see we're in Winchester. And then it'll go um, start scanning stuff. One of the things we really like about this is you can you can scan up to 11 days uh, for a TV show that's going to come on by by show or even by episode name, and uh, you can set it up to record it up to 11 days beforehand. So you can set it up to record. You can also set it up to record a whole series. So if you know you're gonna uh, you're watching something else at, at some other time at the same time you have like I don't know whatever some show you know Big Bang Theory is coming on every week. Um, you can tell it to record all the Big Bang Theory shows on any channel, and it'll record them all, and uh, and that way they'll be there when when you're ready to watch them. It's pretty neat. I love Media Center. Okay, the scan is done, and while um, while it was scanning, I, I knew the card was working, so I went ahead and put the the cover on my case and set my computer back upright. So that's all buttoned back up again. But you can see once your once the scan's completely so scanning, 100% done. Um, and then it says my no channels are found, so I'll have to to look at my thing see where it's going. Something happened with my scanning, so I'll have to figure that out. Sometimes, if you look though, it, it says it found all these channels. So let me see if it'll actually come up with a channel. Uh, we'll do Alice in Wonderland. Let's see if it's working. Yeah. So you can see it's working fine. Um, you hit back up here. And I can also pause TV. And what's cool about it is you can pause the TV. And it'll actually, once you, you can do whatever, and then you can actually go back to it later. I'm not quite sure why it said no TV channels were found. I'm not sure about that. Uh, probably because it didn't find anything above 99. They didn't find any digital channels was the deal. Um, that's okay because honestly, this... Um, our Tom Warner cable in this area really doesn't have anything um, as far as the digital channels go anyway. It's really high def versions of the regular channels and they've never really been all that great anyway. So I'm not super worried about it. I may go back in there and try to figure out why I didn't find the digital channels. But it found all my analog channels all the way up to uh, basically 65 and then there's a couple of local channels that are up higher. So. Uh, let's see if House Hunters comes on our highest channel. Yeah. The last of the three so again, it's not digital, but but it works, it works fine, and uh, you can see I've re I've paused it, and you'll if you watch this little box down here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's a little bright. But right here, you can see it's still moving on. So like, let's say you had to go fix you a drink or get you a snack or something. Then when you come in, when you're ready to, to start watching again, you get play, so here's and it starts playing sleep. again. So that's one of the features I love about Media Center. I don't know why Microsoft would say it's not a used feature because, uh, you know, I use it all the time, and many other people do. Uh, hopefully, I got the version with Windows Media Center with Windows 8 when you can still get it for free. I'm not sure that you can still get it now for free. I think it's a $10 add-on last time I checked, but I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's well worth the, worth getting it, and the TV card works great. Okay, if you remember, I said that it didn't, when it did the scan, it didn't find any of the digital QAM channels. Well, I, I did some reading on it because I forgot what I had done last time to get it to actually show up. The deal is Windows Media Center does not show you channels in the guide that aren't associated with a channel. So, like, in other words, it won't show you things that aren't set up for CBS or Fox or whatever. But they were there. I did find them. It just they they're not um, showing up. So what you do is you go under Task Settings, and you go under TV, and um, um, Guide. 
yeah and edit channels and if you look see there's all of our local channels, the ones that did find but if you go down past all that you'll start seeing we'll have some 60s see 65.5 but it didn't find a name for that channel so it didn't actually save it but that's one of the digital channels um, I just have to remember all the 66 numbers are all of our local like the the music channels you know like where you can listen to big band and heavy metal and classic rock and uh, Latin music and all kinds of different stuff so I usually go through and add those and um, give me just a second hopefully I'll get down to where um, you'll see some of them will have a little lock next to them which means that they're they're encoded you would have to have the cable box or some kind of digital decoder to actually show those but I like to listen to music channels sometimes so I add those it's probably a quicker way but not too many more there like this one see they're locked so if, if I were to try to to do a preview of those you wouldn't be able to see anything it's it's um, it's actually locked but then here's a anything that doesn't have a lock on it um, I pretty much choose and we'll you know then I'll go play around with them you can actually name the channels too you can actually go in here and uh, uh, rename that channel once you uh, get done selecting it and you could go figure out whether it's you know CBS or ABC or whatever but it's picked a lock but anyway, that's where they're at, and then once you get done, click save, and then they'll show up in your channel list then. And you may duplicate some of them, like you might have, you know, two or three KET stations around here that are on the same. Even though there, there's really only three KET channels, they may be listed, these may be all the same channel. So you just, when you go into your guide, you flip through and kind of watch them. Um, if they're the same, just delete, just come back here and just uncheck it. Um, I remember having to do this the first time I set it up, and it took forever. Um, then I went back. Some of these will even be static and you could do show preview, but it takes longer. I like to go ahead and check them all and then I'll write down the ones that aren't working and then go back and uncheck them later. So anyway, that's where they're at. Okay, I went back to guide and you can see that these are all the regular channels that it found before, but then if you go up, here's the ones that I checked and it says no data because it doesn't know what channel it is. And it'll actually never have data because it'll never show the channels. But if you want to figure out what they are, if you just click on them, it'll show the channel. And this one's Big Bang Theory, which I believe that's CBS, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is, and this is the HD channel for CBS. So what I do is, um, this one's, I would write it down, 110.1 of CBS. Well, then if I go back to, oops, let me stop it so that's not in the background. Um, if I go to Task and Settings and TV and Guide, and edit channels. And it, okay, now that I know it's 110.1 of CBS, if you go down here and click on it, right here, and then you hit rename, and you can just say it's uh, CBS HD. And hit save, and save, and save. And then when I go back to guide now, 110.1 now says it's CBS HD. Now it doesn't have a listing there um, because it, it, the guide doesn't know what channel that is. Um, if there is a way you could go through and look at the actual listing, but that particular channel, CBS HD, doesn't actually have a, um, a listing under the guide, so uh, just a generic CBS, so I'm just going to leave it. So if I know, though, that CBS down here, um, I know CBS is channel 10, not channel 10, um, it's channel 2, Whatever's on channel two, the HD version is going to be on the other one. So that's how you figure it out. It's a big pain, kind of, but the regular channels work fine.